ni ni de put him and kill him if you don't knock a man door a man surrender to you know. jail what happened to jail carry him go lock up process him he not have no mother I see him where so he next to come brother dead he don't send no one so he called dead me no real so they kill him he don't send you you don't know, see it I mean no one them I go say they find something over there because of where they travel with Sir Andrew we really want justice because we tired of this now they man take he, they man take too much disadvantage at Jack Monday. We tired of it now. What do you got So we don't have nothing bad for say about the little youth and they kill in the house. He could have run, he could have run, he politically could have done, he could have run. He don't make no effort to run. You know, see, he stand up there and make them put him in here and kill him. You know, see, Andrew want justice. Me ask you, Andrew. My son good I have to tell you what I'm my son good in every I need year. to investigate. Oh God. He is just about 20 him. years old. The son respect to the man. He can't go so. Oh God. He can't go so. Hold it my friend because they have to tell you. They have to tell you what I'm to EJ. Me I tell you say the struggle is real. When me say the struggle is real, me mean say the struggle is real. The Prime Minister win because he promised the people of Jamaica that they could have sleep with their door open. He might go make sure he say him stop all of the crime and the violence in Jamaica. But then the crime and the violence taking over Jamaica rapidly, people. I may have here asked myself, say, where is the Prime Minister? Where is he? The only time you see the Prime Minister is when a mass shooting go on and one whole heap of camera did it. Because a whole heap of camera have did it. If a whole heap of camera did it, the Prime Minister now show up. The other day down at Clarendon, the Prime Minister put him head on the block and say, a war against the gang. And him go find all of the perpetrator them. Right? And before two days time, him could it be able to make the police force cut down one according to him that was one of them, which the people him say he was not and him dead innocently. And now them have over ten people in a lock up for the shooting. Right? No, look at this now. A mass shooting going over there in Pine Hill. Where is the Prime Minister? Eight people get caught up. One lose them three pints. Where is the Prime Minister? A couple were on their way to, mark, to um, work. And gunman running upon them. Take them three pints. Where is the Prime Minister? A soldier lose him life and the job. And it is alleged that and a gunman do it. Where is the Prime Minister? But... Bless up to my viewers and my subscribers. Them. Me hope everybody having a blessed and a wonderful day. Now my viewers and my subscribers, remember, in everything you do, always put God first. In every and uh, any situation, just always remember for call upon God. Always remember for pray because a prayer day, keep the devil away. Now my viewers and my subscribers, leave a like on this video if you don't like the video. You know, and share out the video because... Trust me, this Prime Minister and the Security Minister are not doing enough to ensure that the people of Jamaica are safe. The Prime Minister are not doing enough. The Security Minister, I don't even think we have a Security Minister. Because the little sleepy sleepy man, me don't know why I'm for Jamaica. The Prime Minister and the Security Minister, they need to resign. So people, share out the video and like up the video. Leave a like on this video, alright? Make a run the intro and come back because we have a lot to talk about. We're soon forward. So welcome back to my viewers and my subscribers. Big up to all of my viewers. Big up to all of my subscribers. We continually support the channel and help the channel grow. Now, remember to leave a like on this video. 
remember to give this video a thumbs up also if you're a new viewers first time on my channel then please subscribe to my channel and turn on the post notification bell so whenever we drop new content you will be first to be notified share the content with a friend a family a loved one share it on your social media platform so now my viewers and my subscribers this young man that you're seeing on your screen right now yeah man the one that they look a small picture of so he was cut down over there in denham town right and it is alleged that i know gunman do it it is alleged that it is what it was not a gunman who cut him down so the question is if it was not a gunman who cut him down who take this young man alive he's a young soldier and the question that the family is asking at this moment who who took his life Oh him, oh him, oh him get caught up. You understand what I say? Now, the Prime Minister and the Security Minister, they're not doing enough to protect the nation, to protect our people. And it is a national disgrace, people. And the family of this young man is calling and the authorities to give them answers about their family member, last alive. This is a national disgrace. But people, leave a like on this video. Give it a thumbs up. I'm going to play this video so you can have a better understanding. All right? My son good enough to tell you what I'm to EJ. My son good enough to you. I need it to investigate. Oh, God. EJ is just about 20 years old. My son respect to me. My son. He can't go so. Oh, God. He can't go so. I'm gonna be different. Hold it, my friend, because I'm happy to tell you. I'm happy to tell you what I'm to EJ. EJ left for work yesterday and don't come home this morning. And nothing you can tell her about her son? No, man. We want justice for 20 years. 20 years old, EJ. Justice, we say. We need to know what happened to EJ. EJ, mother, need to know. She in her state, she can't talk now, but she need to know what happened to EJ. We need to know. Very nice person. Everybody know EJ. Everybody know EJ. Very loving, nice. When you see EJ, EJ greet you with a smile. Loving, nice. We know EJ from EJ. I go high school. And I'm at that very fear. Our mother, our, our only son, you know? our only son, and she needs justice. <laughs> only from a mother to a mother would I know what it is like. I saw now that I joined the army, you know? and I'm in a carriage right now, and I'm never that joined the army. Don't know that. Can't tell you that. So we need crazy. justice for EJ. 20 years old, your only son, and them come now and them not tell you nothing. But, them need to um, tell you what happened, what happened, what happened, because them know, they must know. It must be a man in control of them when it happens. They must know. But that's how it goes with the law. That's how it goes. But DJ, justice. By the law or by God. That's all I have to say. I am Deputy Superintendent Rowan Ritchie in charge of operations for the St. Andrew South Division. About an hour ago, residents in the Baldwin Crescent, Brook Avenue area mounted a roadblock in remonstrance of the killing of a member of the Jamaica Defense Force in the Kingston Western Division last night. The residents holds a contrary opinion to what was actually reported, but I have assured them that a thorough investigation is underway. I have expressed on behalf of the commanding officer for St. Andrew South and the commanding officer for Kingston Western Division, in whose division the officer was killed, and also on behalf of the High Command, or deepest condolence. I have asked them for patience. He hails from this particular community, hence the protests. He is loved, he is respected, and so citizens came out in support. Now my question is, where is the Prime Minister? So go and give the family assurance that they will catch a perpetrator, that criminal, that artless monster that took the life of this young soldier. Where is the prime minister at this moment when the mother cry? She am more, hey, where is the prime minister now? The other day you were over there 
in Clarendon because there was a lot of cameras over there. And you know that, that that news would go viral. So you go over there to go score political points. Now a JDF soldier get cut down. Where are you to assure the family that you will make sure that the person who did this brought to justice? Where are you now? Is it because over there is a labor right area? You know, and go over there go make them look bad? Or is it because maybe it was... Uh, one of his own colleagues allegedly took his life. What go on? I want some people you go attend to. Two people lose them life over there in St. Elizabeth. And you wasn't over there neither. You wasn't over there. A man and his wife lose their life heading out to work. You wasn't over there. Over, over um, Pine Hill in St. Catherine. There was a mass shooting as well. We are eight people get caught up, one lose them three points. You wasn't there. You know, go assure them, say, you're going to bring down the perpetrator. And if somebody tell you about your mother, I tell you about your big nose. I tell you about your wife, I tell you, say, they might go do this and that to you. It takes you less than 24 hours to find them. That simple means that you can more than stop crime. But you don't want to stop crime. You, the Prime Minister, you don't want to stop crime. Because if you did interested for stop crime, every time when one of them shooting a guan or somebody get unalive or something, you would be there and you would push out the same effort as when you push out down a Clarendon. You would push out the same effort when you push out when somebody threaten you or tell you about your mother. But you care zero about the Jamaican people. And Jamaica people are hard to see that. Them hard to see it. Because them put them trust in you too much. You is a fake prime minister. And because you know that these people trust you so much. You keep on lying to these people. You keep on lying to them. From the day you go in a power. Until to the day. You keep lying to these people. You have never spoken truth out of your mouth to any one of us. Pure lie. Pure lie you tell me. And it's a, it is a national disgrace, Mr. Prime Minister. Me, I tell you. Generated plants to bring down the cost of electricity to you. I don't like to make promise. I make commitment. And under the Labour Party government, we are going to ensure that we bring to this country the big power plants. We are going to ensure that we bring to this country the big energy companies that can put the money in here to build the plants to give you cheaper and better electricity. Eight years now since you make Jamaica that promise there. Eight years now since you make Jamaica that promise. Big old lie you tell the Jamaican people him. And right now the people them have here cry because of dirty JPS. The people them have here cry because of JPS. You is a you is a fake Prime Minister, a liar. You lie till lie print out all boat over your face. You and your ministers them. I don't know when you are gonna stop from tell lie. It come like lie did make in a your mouth and it just stick in and it not come out. But me don't know how comes Jamaican people can ever trust you, Mr. Prime Minister. Oh, These people are too easy to brainwash. And that is why you take advantage of them. Because you know, say, them easy for brainwash. So you continue tell them pure lie. You're a liar, man, man. You're too lie. So I'm here today at Montego Bay Metro, which has been crying out for assistance since I became minister in May. So today, before these buses came, there were six buses in operation servicing four parishes. And we have now eight buses here on top of the six, plus we have four more on Sunday. This is going to be impact in the back to school and the routes that are served. So they're going to upgrade from five servicing five schools dedicating service for five schools to nine, and they're going to continue to serve four parishes, moving from how much 
How much roots? From five roots to 11. From five roots to 11 roots. So you can understand the impact of Western Jamaica of the four parishes. It will also be servicing, as I said, the four parishes, Trelawney, St. James, Hanover, and Westmoreland. And basically, people will see a much improved, efficient service. All of the buses are air conditioned. So in this summer heat, you will get some relief. The buses will ply on a schedule, both for the schools and for the public commuters. And basically, this is a new beginning for Montego Bay Metro and the areas that it's served. I want to apologize for the fact that the service has not been up to par because of the lack of buses, but I think that we are making a huge improvement in relation to these buses and I will be making allocations out of the next order of buses so that some of the buses that come here from the next order will be able to apply what I call the rural routes. In Kingston, we have the same sort of routes that require smaller buses to navigate the, 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 the roads and the topography of the, of the, of the, of the, of the parishes, especially in, in Kingston, we call them the hill routes. And I suspect that you will probably call them similar down here. So for those persons who are on the interior, that these buses will not service, you can understand and rely on me that help is on the way. Because I understand exactly what the situation is in terms of the difficulty of getting down out of the hills onto the flat and getting back up. But the other one day, are the other layered one, Daryl Vals. Me say the man lie, man lie, man lie. Hey, people, how can you trust Daryl Valls, Andrew Wellness, Christopher Tough Time? How can you trust any one of them? And another thing, when Andrew Wellness are going to declare him asset, when? Why want to start from pressure Andrew Wellness from declaring his asset? When him are going to name out the six criminal them when in a parliament, not six, but eight criminal when in a parliament and rob the Jamaican people of their hard earning money. And the next thing, why Andrew Wallace is fighting against the farmers? Is it that it is something that is in the IMF deal for him to fight against the farmers so they cannot produce food for their country? Me no know. But people, check out this video from Lisa and her people. I'm going to leave you with this video. Remember to leave a like. 23 million US dollars in chicken neck and back is what we import to Jamaica annually. 13 million US dollars in beef offals. That's like the liver and the kidney. Beef trimmings is 16 million US. And then rice is 84 million US dollars. And so you might be asking, Lisa, this, why do we import so much US dollars worth of, of animal and rice? Well, it's simply because Jamaicans cannot afford to buy chicken, beef, or fish to feed their families. So they must resort to the parts of the animals, the cuts and the trimmings. Now here's a disclaimer. I'm not in the PMP shadow cabinet, so what I'm about to say may not contend with their views. But this is something I've been speaking and writing about for years. In other words, the pot are boiled, but the food not enough, enough of the family them were out. And I would like you to think for yourself and re-examine the data of some long-held beliefs of what others have tried to impose on you, saying that it is supposed to be in your best interest. Today, I want to highlight one of those beliefs and say why our people as a result remain unhealthy with obesity, high blood pressure, and other primary health ailments. It's because they can't afford to buy a balanced food basket. And for the non-vegetarians, this is because the price of chicken meat is out of their reach. I'm not going to any other meats today. You see, for decades, Jamaica has had a 250% duty protection on chicken meat. Globally, in other countries, the average import duty rate on chicken is 24%. So why are we paying 250% or why is the duty rate 250% in Jamaica? Is this really in our people's national interest or are we serving the interest of very few individuals, in particular two companies? Now, before you all have a knee-jerk reaction and say, but you know, Lisa, it helps protect it because it helps with local production. Let us look at the data rather than emotion. You see, the international cost breakdown to produce a chicken is feed, largely corn. That makes up 61% of a chicken. Baby chicks, 
is 18%. You have to house them, that's 7%. Other inputs are about 10%, and labor is only 4%. We don't make feed in Jamaica. We don't produce corn. We don't produce wheat. We don't produce soya bean. Those are the inputs that go into the feed for a chicken. So what we refer to as feed mills in Jamaica are largely big silos and a mixer that blend up everything together, these imported inputs, and that goes into the final product, much in the same way that a mason, you see, mix up concrete, which are sand, stone, cement, and water. But at least in concrete, all of those inputs are produced in Jamaica. So the local feed is totally, for chicken is actually totally imported. So in effect, the local Jamaican direct cost input of chicken is less than 10%. Therefore, I, I really challenge the logic of providing excessive duty protections to any product with a local input that is less than 10%. I've been saying it for years. All of the inputs in animal feed are traded as commodities in the marketplace globally. And like oil, that price fluctuates in keeping with the laws of supply and demand. I bet you can't tell me how much corn has come down over the last two years. The price of corn has fallen from 801 US dollars in April 2022 to less than $392.50 today. Check it for yourself on tradingeconomics.com. You see, on straight mathematical terms, with that kind of 50% reduction in the cost of feed, which represents 61% of the cost input of a chicken, our chicken prices should have gone down by at least 30%. But guess what? They went up. So who is really benefiting? Certainly not the Jamaican people whose citizens find it hard to afford a whole chicken for dinner on a daily basis. Certainly not the workers at the factory whose pay remains much the same. And, and certainly not the Jamaican economy, as there's been very little growth in the agricultural sector generally for years. Did you know that if you apply for a permit to import a container load of chicken in any form, back parts, breast, wing, thigh, whatever, the Ministry of Agriculture first refers the matter to the two chicken monopoly producers to find out if they have any objection? Tell them to challenge me on this. What do you think will be their response? With that kind of system in place, there is effectively no real competition in the marketplace. As a matter of fact, there is no marketplace. You pay what the two local monopolies decide you should pay. And since it is so obvious, you will wonder, well, why is this backward policy been allowed to continue for decades? Well, the false fallacy is that we're saving the livelihood of 30,000 small farmers. But is this really true? And maybe, maybe after this video, you'll find them finding farmers who said, no, we've benefited, etc. But ask yourself if it is really true. Is it really true? It is the same two producers who sell the baby chicks to small farmers, the same two producers who sell the feed to small farmers. So it is in their interest to put the price of chicken as high as it can be so that they can convince us that they're actually acting in our best interest. So you see, when a mother comes into my constituency office and says, like they, like they do all the time, and especially now with back to school, why MP, I need help with 50 chicken and some feed to send the fit and them go back to school. Either the state or me will actually purchase the chickens or the feed. But guess where I'm purchasing it from? The same people. So it's a vicious cycle that's not benefiting our people. And I feel so strongly about it because I'm tired of it. So here's a suggestion that might actually be in the best interest of Jamaica and small farmers. And it's a suggestion. Reduce the duty on chicken to 50%, which would still be twice the international norm and use the duty collected because we actually don't collect any duty now. And use that duty to purchase baby chicks and distribute them free to small farmers. They'll not a bite. Therefore, and you could also eliminate the duty on feed and allow anyone, any little jack man door off if they need a permit to bring in container loads to bring in chicken. It should not be only the big people who get permits. The result of such a policy or suggestion would not only lower the prices for chicken, but more people would be engaged in raising chickens. Jamaica has one of the highest diabetes rates in the world, and that is directly linked to the fact that they consume so much starch and carbohydrates 
because they need to feel full. They can't afford to buy protein. And this is because the average family is not feeding their families properly. So Jamaica has a policy that has kept the price of chicken high, which only benefits two chicken producing monopolies. And it puts the nation at health, a health risk, and then imposes on the general poor public to pay a high price for chicken, thereby having an unhealthy diet. You know, Marcus Garvey said on his birthday was recent that chance has never really satisfied the hope of a suffering people. And it's a powerful declaration because it means that to change ourselves positively and indeed the lives of the oppressed, we need to have deliberate purpose of effecting change, not to tinker along and hope that things will fix themselves. That is a foolhardy approach and quite frankly, timid. I've, I've bemoaned over the years that it, it's probably easier to buy a politician than to become one. So no, look, let's make everyone benefit, not only those with deep pockets. And I've been saying this for years, let us re-examine our policies for Jamaicans to actually be able to afford healthy food, especially protein. It's time that we re-examine the duty protections that we have on chicken meat.